Ganga, the snake charmer, handling the biggest and the most dangerous cobra in captivity. Toy, the little lady who has tied herself into knots in every country in the world. A sensation, folks, a sensation. Colonel Jim and Lady Tiny, the biggest little people on earth. Ah, oh, folks, you can't afford to miss it. Think of it. For the small sum of 25 cents, one quarter of a dollar, you're going to see the greatest show on earth. Come on, let's... Everyone, the line forms on the left. Come on, folks. Do I have to beg you to see the greatest show on earth for a quarter? Tickets, please. Tickets. One at a time. Don't crowd. There's plenty of room for all. Hey. Hey. Tickets. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, including humble self. Pass. <laughs> Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, give me your attention, please. Right here in front of this platform, you will next be entertained right here. I will now introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, the biggest little artist within a circus on the face of the earth. They have appeared before all of the crowned heads of the world. Colonel Tim, 42 inches small, and Lady Tiny, 2 inches smaller. They will now entertain you. Chinese gentleman just come in here? You mean the guy with his own sideshow? He's right over there, boss. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I will introduce Gangor, the Hindu snake charmer who fearlessly handles the most poisonous reptiles. Gangor! Are you, Mr. Chan? Humbly admit identity. You, Mr. Kinney, who extend most generous invitation to circus. Yes, I saw in the morning paper you were in town. I wanted you to be my guest. <laughs> Very kind. Free ticket to circus, uh, like gold ring on merry-go-round. <laughs> Make enjoyment double. <laughs> oh, uh, pleased to meet honorable wife. And uh, latest blessed event. Glad to know you, Miss Chan. Happy to announce, have taken whole full house for vacation. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, multitudinous family. Very interested in little people. Well, I'll introduce you. Come over here, you two peanuts. This is Tim and Mrs. Tim, the biggest little runts on earth. Size of package does not indicate quality within. Thank you. Thank you. We've often seen your pictures in the papers, Mr. Chen. Yes, and we've read about every case you've worked on. Have a cigar. <laughs> Thank you. Do not indulge. Oh, I won't. Uh, have the peppermint stick? 
Thank you. Uh, you also? Thank you. May I have your autograph, Mr. <laughs> Chan, please? Very great pleasure. Uh, hold, please. And now, ladies and gentlemen, right this way, right this way, I will introduce to you Su Toy, that beautiful little flower of the Orient. She ties herself in a thousand knots. Watch her, ladies and gentlemen, the human puzzle, Su Toy. Here. Hey! Oh, Joe. How about you and me getting together? I've got a see Can't it. make it tonight. Too many things to look after. Now, you've been keeping me waiting for weeks. And you'll keep on waiting till I'm good and ready. I don't want to impose on you, Mr. Chan, but when I sent you the invitation to come here tonight, there was a little matter I wanted to get your advice about. <laughs> Excuse, please. They've promised wife not to let anything interfere with family vacation. It'll only take a few minutes and be doing me a great favor. Can take matter up now? Well, uh, I've been getting a lot of threatening letters lately. They're all unsigned and they arrive very mysterious. Now, frankly, I'm a bit worried. If you notice, they're all, uh... Oh, well, it's time for the show to start. I'll tell you what, Mr. Chan, if you wouldn't mind slipping out during the performance, I'll be at the business wagon in the back lot at 9 o'clock. We'll be there. Thanks. You better gather your family together. I'd like to take you someplace where there's a snappy dance orchestra. Oh, boy, I'll bet you can shake a mean rumba. I'm shaking you right now. I told you the show leaves town tonight. Then how about tomorrow night? If it's not too far, I can run over to see you. Excuse? <laughs> Pardon interruption, please? Oh, Pop, this is Sue Toy. Gee, you ought to see her do her stuff. So please. <laughs> the hope romantic offspring has not tried to twist charming artist around finger. Oh, no, Mr. Chan. I had my fingers crossed. Wise precaution uh, to accept applesauce with large pinch of salt. Excuse, please. <laughs> Show starting. Where are brothers and sisters entrusted to your care? Oh, I've got that all fixed, Pop. <laughs> the take tonight? 2680 That's so good. No, business doesn't pick up. I'm afraid I won't be able to pay you those notes by the end of the season. Well, that's your worry. I know I'll do the best I can. I may have to ask you for an extension. I'll get this straight, Gaines. With me, a bargain is a bargain. If you can't meet your obligations, I'm taking over your half of the show. But good heavens, man. Every dollar I have in the world is tied up in this circus. You can't do anything. Oh, yes, I can. And another thing... Mr. I... Kenny... The ape's acting up again. Blake says it'll be dangerous to work him tonight. Well, why bother me about it? You're a head animal man. Use the whip on him. Yeah? I did that once, and you know what it got me. If you ask me, Blake's using good sense. Nobody's asking you. I'll take care of the ape. You're making a mistake, Joe. You can't run a circus with a bullwhip. You look out for your end gains. I'll take care of mine. tonight, Mr. Kenny. If he goes bad in the Big Ten, someone will get hurt. Even the ape knows you're yellow. We you gotta show him who's boss. Hey, cut it out! 
Don't you see you're only making him worse? Well, fire, Blake. Give me the key to that cage. That's okay with me. If I have to crawl to anyone like you, I don't want the job. I'll take that key oh, for you. Don't. Are you... Get out of here! Get off the lot, all of you! Wait a minute. Blake isn't going, or anybody else. Get back to your work, Ben. You and I will handle this later. <laughs> Lou, can I see you a minute? Yes, come on in. What's the matter? Why aren't you working? Oh, I'm through. I've quit. What, again? Yeah, but this time it sticks, and I'm taking you with me. Oh, now, now. Tell me what it's all about. Oh, I'm sick of the whole rotten mess. Let's get away from here and live like regular people. I'll scrape up enough dough somehow. Oh, you wouldn't leave the circus for all the money in the world. You know you wouldn't. Oh, wouldn't I? Where's your sister? Marie's over at the wardrobe tent getting her costume fixed. Oh, so that's what it was. You had another argument with Kenny. Yeah, he's not going to boot me around like he does the animals. Marie. Oh, hello, dear. I'm sending your act on early tonight. Why? What's happened? Ah, uh, scrap with Hal Blake. I fired him. The eight back isn't working. Oh, Joe. You're always getting into trouble with someone. Well, that's the only way to get things in this world. You gotta fight for them. No, it isn't. You only make people hate you. And I want people to like the man I'm going to marry. Here's your cape. Thanks, Nellie. There's your music cue. Come on, Kate, get going. What's the matter? Joe when he comes around on Marie's here. Just to burn me up. I'm going to tell him so next time. That won't get you anywhere. If you were any kind of a brother, you wouldn't have let him treat me the way he has. I'm taking care of that in my own way. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great privilege and honor to be able to introduce to you that fearless little aerial star, Miss Marie Norman. <laughs> The only artiste in the world with any circus today doing a forward somersault from a flying trapeze and catching by her heels. She will perform this death-defying feat without the aid of Annette. Marie Norman. Oh, Pop, I was just looking for you. Following road map? <laughs> I saw you leave and figured something was up. I wanted to be in on it. Curiosity responsible for Cat needing nine lives. You looking for somebody, Mr. Chen? Had appointment here with Mr. Kinney, but find door locked. Well, this is Mr. Gaines, Mr. Kinney's partner. How do you do? Anything I can do for you? Hey, Pop, look, there's a light on the inside. Shouldn't be. I locked the wagon up myself over half an hour ago. Uh, perhaps advisable to investigate. Have key to wagon? Yes, I have. It's 
bolted on the inside. Most peculiar. Door bolted on the inside suggests someone there. But no answer to knock. There's one way to find out. Break the door in. Uh, that isn't necessary. I'll get a lock. Uh, one moment. More than one way to remove skin from cat. Ventilator on roof, open. Perhaps a little man can enter. Why, I couldn't get up there. Giant, very good for first step. Sure. There you go. It'll be a long drop to the floor. Uh, may borrow walking stick? Why, sure. <laughs> Uh, Jack, have no trouble sliding down beanstalk. Lift me up, I can't see. Why, certainly. Nothing, please. Coward, get the show doctor. Too late. Mr. Kinney, dead. Dead? He must have been murdered. Neck broken. Strangled by very powerful hands. How'd he get out? Wasn't the cage locked? Sure it was. Someone must have opened it. Never mind that. Come on, fellas, scatter out. Don't let him get near the big top. <laughs> but the door was bolted on the inside. Much evil can enter through very small space. Police must find answer. Oh, wait, Mr. Chan. You're a detective. Can't this be handled quietly? Very happy to be of assistance, but police must be notified. I'll do it, Pop. There's a telephone across the street. All of you go about your business as if nothing had happened. I don't want any excitement while the show is on. I'll get Dr. Mead. The police will probably want him. Chief of the Homicide Squad? There's been a murder at the circus. Of course I know it's murder. I'm a detective myself. Okay, Chief. Suspected same. Observe. Hairs not from the human head. I got it, Pop. The monkey hairs. They have killed him. Very good deduction. But how did he get in? The wagon was locked on the inside. Suggest we make inspection outside window. Come. Found anything? Not a trace. Jerry, look at those shadows over there by the canvas. You, Frank, go around the other way. The guy don't get behind you. Ape tracks. Gee, Pop. 
That is barrel he used to climb up to window. And here's some more prints on the barrel. Come out! Jesus! Jesus! to his cage. Good work, Holt. It took a lot of nerve to do that. Are you hurt, Pop? <laughs> Side of wagon, uh, not like uh, feather bed. <laughs> Thank you so much for fortunate rescue. Oh, that's all right. Here come the police, Pop. Recommend you stay here. Study approved method of police. But, Pop, I... One ounce of experience worth a ton of detective books. Go ahead, fellas. Give the place the once over. I can give you the dope, Lieutenant Macy. The big ape escaped during the show and murdered him. The proof is right there on the windowsill. Right here, Mr. Macy. Looks like your tip's about right, kid. They're rape hairs. There's only one thing I haven't figured out yet. How they got there with that window locked. That's right. Here. Well, that's easy. Look. The window must have been propped open at the time, like that. Now, you stay right here, and I'll show you how it was done. You better come this way a little. All right, now turn your back to me. That's it. Now don't move. The ape creeps up on the outside, reaches in through the bars, grabs Kenny by the throat, shakes him, chokes him, <coughs> kills him. Now then, in getting away, he knocks the prop down. And the lock snaps shut. <coughs> Gee, Mr. Macy, you figure that one out fine. Hey. I hope I didn't hurt you. Oh, no. Now, let me have that magnifying glass again, will you? Sure. There's one more thing I haven't figured out yet. Yeah, what's that? The barrel wasn't here. It was over there. Now, here's what happened. When the ape stepped down, the barrel tipped over, like that. Gee, Mr. Macy, I hope I didn't hurt you. Oh, yeah. You're pretty good at figuring things out yourself, ain't you? Here's your glass. Glad I didn't break it. Oh, thanks. Now that I got that figured out, I want to know how the ape got out of that cage. Perhaps can offer a slight suggestion. Oh, this is my father, Charlie Chan, Lieutenant Macy. How are you, Mr. Chan? You sure got a bright kid. He just gave me a good stare. Uh, sometimes suspect uh, ambitious offspring of giving bull. <laughs> oh, did you find anything new, Pop? Ape released purposely. Hal Blake, who worked animal, have two keys to cage. Lost one earlier tonight. Either Blake open cage or person who find lost key. Uh-huh. Where is he? Where is he? They've taken him away, lady. Just a minute, please. Who are you? I'm Ray Norman, Mr. Kitty's fiance. I want to go to him. You couldn't do anything for him now, miss. We didn't want to tell you until after the show, Marie. So sorry. Offer deepest sympathy. Someone killed him. I know it. They hated him. They all hated him. What do you mean by that? Uh, later, please. <laughs> I suggest you take young lady away. Come, Marie. Well, what she said about them hating Kinney proves your point, that the ape was released purposely. We better round up the whole outfit and give them a grilling, Mr. Chan. <laughs> oh, one point more. It would suggest you look for threatening letters Mr. Kinney 
had an inside pocket of coat. Now, mysteriously missing. Excuse, please. Uh, must return to family. We'll say good night. Well, thanks for the help. Don't mention it. Uh, dig up the manager of the show and tell him I want to talk to everyone connected with the case. Yes, sir. Gee, Pop, I hate to walk out on this case. I can see some interesting angles. Contortion, lady? Gee, that reminds me. See you later, Pop. Help! Gosh, Sue Toy, I'm sorry. Let me out of here, you! Listen, please, I just couldn't get back any sooner. Don't speak to me! I just had to put you in there safe. All right, come join me. Say, hey! Give me a melon. Hey, don't like me. Hey, Sue Toy, let me out, will you? Sue, Sue, come back here. Oh, uh, Mama, uh, you have railroad tickets? Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm. I can find my raincoat. Oh, hurry to bed, Jordan. Hurry up. Here, Daddy, here's your shoes. Oh, thank you so much. You know, I think we ought to stick with this case, Pop, and go to the next town with the circus. Have desired to remain permanently in monkey cage? Have late visitor. Here I am, Mr. Chan. Oh, come in. <laughs> Excuse me for coming here so late, but it's terribly important. Very happy to welcome distinguished little visitor. Oh, hi, hi, hi. oh Mr. Chan, are you going away? Yes. Tomorrow I'm taking family to observe wonders of Grand Canyon. Oh, I'm so sorry. You are in trouble? Sit down. Mr. Macy took my husband and Mr. Gaines and some of the circus people down to police headquarters. Mm, distinguished uh, lieutenant of police act with the streamlined speed. And he says he's going to try to show up until the murder of Mr. Kinney is solved. If he does that, the circus will just go to pieces and we'll all lose our jobs. That would be most unfortunate, isn't it? It'll cost Mr. Gaines everything he's got. And Mr. Chan, he's been an awfully good friend to Tim and me and everyone. We've been with him for five years, and there never was any trouble until Mr. Kinney joined the show. How long has Mr. Kinney been partner in circus? Just the last two seasons. Mr. Gaines needed money, so he sold him a half interest. But Mr. Kinney didn't know how to handle circus people. He was only used to honky tongues and try to run things with his fists. Men who seek trouble never find it far off. It's Mr. Gaines who's in trouble now. Can't you do something, Mr. Chan? Please. Unfortunately, have already made plans for vacation with family. Oh, I was depending on you to help us. Oh, Pop, don't let them close down the circus. And don't let them arrest our little people. And the clown! And the elephant! Oh, oh Pop, please. Please, please! You see, Pop, I knew we should have stayed on this case. Oh, oh Pop, come on! Please. <laughs> Jury seemed to render verdict without retiring. Then you'll help us, Mr. Chan? Final decision in hands of judge. Judge, say yes still. Oh. <laughs> Suggest we visit police headquarters and see Lieutenant Macy. Oh, thanks. Uh, I'm going with you, Pop. Contradiction, please. You stay here. Help unpack. <laughs> we had a pretty tough season, so naturally the show went into red. I gave Kinney notes for my share of the losses. Then if those notes weren't paid by the end of the season, he would have taken over your share of the show. He could have. Well, as far as I can see, every one of you might have had a reason for wanting Kinney out of the way. Now, some one of you had a hand in turning the ape loose. And until I get the answer, you're all going to stay right here. Well, you can't do that. We may be tied up here for weeks. This show's got to keep moving to support itself. It's the law, brother. All right, Stone, take him out and have him booked. Uh, but you... Just a small town cop wants to show how smart he is. Yeah. All right, get going, both of you. Go on. May I offer a suggestion, please? Go ahead. 
Frightened bird, very difficult to catch. What does that mean in English? Old English adage say, give man plenty rope, will hang self. Not in this case. I'm gonna give them a few hours in the jug and I'll bet they uncork everything they know. Perhaps facts also remain corked in jug. <laughs> a guilty person, more apt to betray self while engaged in everyday work at circus. <laughs> I suppose I should join the circus as a mind reader and guess the answer. Very wise plan. Are you kidding? Say, uh, that gives me an idea. If I let them carry on with the show, then I can study the conditions under which the crime was committed. Trained mind of policemen work like lightning. Yeah. Say, listen, Charlie. You were in on the start of this. Why don't you stick with me to the finish? Thank you so much. We'll return to humble family and make arrangements. Fine. <laughs> Sue! Sue Toy! You again? Yeah, I'm going along with you. What? Sure, haven't you heard? I'm going to help Pop solve the murder. Well, you can solve anything you want to, but keep away from me. Oh, don't be like that. We'll have a swell time. I brought along my phonograph and I got a lot of records from Shanghai. That's fine. Then you can play yourself to sleep. Good night. Ladies seem to have dropped final curtain. Oh, that, that's just her way of saying good night. Mm. Very practical. There is nothing to detain you further. What time do you say this train pulls out? Midnight. We better get aboard. What are you doing in the manager's compartment? Waiting to see Gaines. Well, wait outside. We don't want the smell of animals in here. What is it, Harold? Thought I'd better ride up forward tonight and keep an eye on the aid. It's a good idea. Go ahead. Is that Kenny's stateroom? Yes, mine's further down the corridor. Hold. Take the bags to Mr. Kenny's room. You don't mind sleeping there, Mr. Chan? Uh, no. Guilty conscience only enemy to peaceful rest. How about your son? Huh? Oh, oh, oh I don't mind. You can use this room any time you like. Thank you. Now, this way, sir. You are a Hindu from the side show? Uh, yes, sir. But on the circus, we all have more than one job. I'm the porter on this car. <laughs> uh, circus performer like detective. Uh, must be Johnny of many trades. <laughs> yeah, you said it. Uh, bring all the baggage, please. Yes, sir. Mm. Did Kenny keep all his papers here? No, he used the safe in the business wagon, too. Well, how about having a look at it? A lot of trouble. The wagon's already been loaded on the flat cars forward. Oh, well, we'll look at it in the morning. Oh, pardon me. It's all right. Dan, did you tell them? No. They'll find out soon enough. Oh, you should have told them tonight. Let me handle it, will you? Where are you going? I'm riding forward on the flat cars. I saw the... <laughs> Ancient adage say, music soothes savage breast. Uh, pleased to reserve for such occasion. I was just trying to cheer things up, Pop. It's kind of creepy here in Kenny's room. Then recommend you brush teeth, say prayers, and go to bed. I'm not sleepy yet. You know, I'm going out on the platform and think this case over. We have new problem in female geometry? You know what you always say, Pop. If you want to understand men, study women. Yeah. Did Pop say that? Yeah. Going on, but I'm worried. Well, lie down and 
down sheep. I never did like sheep, and you know it. Well, try elephants. You don't have to count so many. Think you're smart, don't you? Aim carefully. Cannot afford to miss. Perfect bullseye. Very proud of number one son. Gee, Pop, I knew we shouldn't have slept in here. Hey, Charlie. What happened? Uh, somebody object to Charlie Chan as passenger on train. A snake. How could that have gotten in here? Very strange. When retired, ventilator closed. Well, then someone must have opened it from the roof and slipped the snake in. Where are they kept? A Ford and one of the menagerie cars. Holt's the only one that handles them. Yeah, that's right. Well, what's the answer? Well, how do I know? I haven't left this car all night. How'd the snake get in here? Well, how'd the ape get out of the cage? Question without answer. Like faraway water, no good for nearby fire. Yeah, but I know one answer, though. Somebody's trying to pin this on me just because I handle the snakes. Well, this time I'm going to find out what's what if I have to keep everyone on this train awake all night. <laughs> no cause for hurry now. The enemy who misses Mark, like serpent, must coil to strike again. Good night. just doing my daily dozen. Uh, attitude prove Darwin theory correct. <laughs> uh, suggest you untie human pretzel and get dressed. Yeah, sure. Uh, Pop, get me out of this, will you? <laughs> uh, very wise to know way out before going in. <laughs> uh, oh. oh, thanks, Pop. Where are you going? Uh, I'm having breakfast with little people. More coffee, Mr. Chan? Thank you. Another piece of toast? <laughs> no more, thank you. <laughs> Very excellent coffee. Thank you. Tiny's a good cook. Do they dunk in China, Mr. Chan? Please? Dunk. Dunk. Oh, <laughs> a very ancient Chinese custom. Tiny, don't be so unrefined. I was hoping, Mr. Chen, that you'd have some new clues. Have uh, several clues. One need explanation. Perhaps you can be of assistance. Sure, I'll be glad to help. You enter business wagon last night before discovery of body? Why, I, uh... You better tell Mr. Chen everything. He's a mind reader. Very easy to read mind. 
when clue like a uh, rag on sore thumb. Mm. Marks in dust on light shade prove little man on first visit slide down lamp cord to reach floor. It's true. I did go in. Mr. Gaines left his keys in there after the matinee. So I climbed down the ventilator and opened the door for him. Uh, something important Mr. Gaines want in wagon? I don't know. He started to open the safe, then Mr. Kinney came in. They got into an argument about business, so I beat it. But please don't tell the police. They suspect Mr. Gaines already. If they knew that, they'd be sure to arrest him. Uh, facts like photographic film must be exposed before developing. Mm. Uh, thank you for a very excellent breakfast. Don't mention it, Mr. Chen. Is there anything else we can do for you? I have desire to again visit Ape's Cage. We'll take you there. I always bring the ape a banana in the morning. He's crazy about them. No matter how mad he is, it always quiets him. <laughs> yeah. This is Jumbo. He's my special pet. Really? <laughs> Most fortunate animal. <laughs> Like Charlie Chan, need to reduce waistline. <laughs> How would you like to be inside, playing with them? Much prefer being outside, looking in. <laughs> Quiet down. Al, I brought Caesar a banana. Be careful, Tiny. You're still pretty mean. Oh, he wouldn't hurt me. Will you help me up, Mr. Chan, please? Here, Caesar. Huh. Uh, any news of missing key? Uh, no, sir, but Mr. Macy put this policeman here to guard the cage. Hey, Pop! Pop! I've been looking all over for you. The business wagon was broken into last night, and Mr. Macy wants you there right away. More trouble for poor Mr. Gaines. Uh, trouble rain on man already wet. Excuse, please. Excuse. Looks like an amateur tried to break it open. A regular yank would have known he couldn't chisel his way through a cold steel safe door. Any fingerprints? No, not a trace. So where was the business wagon last night? On the flat car. Yeah, and I locked it up before it was put on the car. Pop! Look. They filed through the hasp to get into the wagon. Open the safe, Gaines. Let's take a look. What do you make of it, Pop? Very clever job. And uh, excellent bronze filings. Nothing's been touched. You didn't get into the safe. Well, for a quick guess, Charlie, I'd say that whoever was responsible for Kinney's death must have wanted something out of this safe. <laughs> Quite possible. Yeah, what's this? Joseph Kinney, personal. Life insurance policy, $50,000. Who is beneficiary? It was changed last month to uh, Marie Norman. Trapeze lady. Mr. Kinney's fiancée. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Here's a certificate of marriage. What's that? Juarez, Mexico, May 30th, 1935. Joseph Kinney and Nellie Farrell. Say, what is this fiancé business? They're very peculiar. Man already married, announced engagement to, to trapeze lady. I got it. The Norman girl must have found out he was too time in her and decided to collect the insurance. Too soon to count chickens uh, until eggs are in nest. Who is Nellie Farrell? Uh, the wardrobe woman, Dan Farrell's sister. She and Kinney used to go together, but... Uh, he threw her over for Marie Norman. Did you ever hear Kinney speak of being married to her? Never. If he did, he kept it to himself. Well, is that his signature? Yes, it is. Very strange. Nellie Farrell did not reveal last night she was wife of a murdered man. I got it, Mr. Macy. Maybe this is the lucky break we're looking for. We'll need it if we're ever going to crack this case. One grain of luck is sometimes worth more than a whole rice field of wisdom. Yeah. Say, where can I find this Nellie Farrell? She's probably over on the train. Come on, Charlie, let's go have a little talk with her. Well, 
Are you Nellie Farrell? No. She was over there reading the morning paper just a few minutes ago. Well, where'd she go? Who wants to know? Oh, she said she had some business in town. She'd be back before the show started. Yeah. Say, Pop, I just thought of something. I'll see you later. So she went to town on business. I wonder what that's all about. Uh, perhaps we'll learn when meet with her. Very excellent likeness of Mr. Kinney. Yeah, well, we know what he looked like. His picture isn't going to get us anything. <laughs> Cannot tell where path lead until reach end of road. Hey, let me look at that, will you? Say, big boy, what's the big idea? Here it is. What a freight. Come on! on the right track. There's Nellie's brother. Where? Let me see. Well, I should kiss a pig. There, there, dear. There, there. There, there. There's Nellie, too. They're coming this way. Keep your head down and we'll trail them. What did the lawyer say? There isn't a chance of a slip up. I can claim everything. Good morning, Mr. Chan. How did you know it was me? I never forget a face. Don't give me away. I'm on a hot trail. You must be. Something burning. Hiya, Sue. We're detectives. We're in disguise. Well, the first thing you better learn is how to keep your disguise up. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Pop. <laughs> you find Nelly Farrell visit lawyer's office? Gee, how did you know? <laughs> Very simple. Saw you get idea from newspaper with the clipping cut out. Uh, very proud you will learn tricks of trade so quickly. And I thought I was putting something over on you. But she went there, all right. And when she came out... She meet brother Dan Farrell. I'm telling you? You're telling me. Very simple. Brother also missing from circus lot. Well, anyway, I followed them and listened in. She told him there wasn't a chance of a slip-up. She could claim everything. And then? And then they walked on and... Well, uh, I... You meet contortion lady? Oh, how do you do it, Pop? <laughs> Evidence like uh, nose on anteater. Jade Pin belonged to lady of many angles. Gee, you can see through anything. I don't see what you need a microscope for. Good tools, shorten labor. Have made very interesting discovery. Observe. What are those spots? Bronze filings from padlock on door of business wagon. Discovered in this envelope, which contained personal papers of Mr. Kinney. But that envelope was inside the safe. And the safe wasn't broken open. Contradiction, please. Bronze filings prove otherwise. Same person who filed lock also opened safe. Must have known combination. Then batter safe door to give appearance of unsuccessful attempt at burglary. It's over my head. Particles of bronze filings from padlock unconsciously deposited in envelope when burglar handled same. I get it. But what do you suppose they stole from the envelope? Mystery is still to be solved. Oh, uh, 
Uh, I, I was just going to tell Mr. Chan the matinee is about to start, and I thought maybe he needed something before I left. Oh, yeah? Well, get out of here. We'll make it snappy. I just caught Holt listening outside the door. Inquisitive person like bear after honey. Sometime find hornet's nest. Circus starting. Perhaps Nelly Farrell now returned. Yeah, that's why I came to get you. We'll look her up. Advise no mention of marriage certificate. Leave first move to lady. Oh, sure. Hey, Jenny, what about my turban? Right there under your nose. Where? Jenny, where are my slippers? I don't know. Yeah, but there's no shoes with this outfit. Look for them yourself. That's Nellie's job, not mine. Lou. Did you think over what we talked about last night? Yes, Hal, but I couldn't leave Marie, especially now. There isn't anything you can do for her. Listen, I've got it fixed up for a job in Chicago. We'll hop the night train. Oh, by Jenny. Isn't Nellie Farrell back yet? No, and I think it's a dirty trick piling up all this work on yeah, her. Yeah, don't blame me if I'm late for the show. Jenny, haven't you found my slippers yet? All right, folks. Do the best you can. We'll have everything straightened out in a little while. Jenny, get your parade stuff racked over there. Make more room for this other wardrobe. I only got one pair of hands, Mr. Gaines. I'm doing the best I can. I know you. Well, Nellie? Why weren't you on the job? I don't have to answer to you anymore, Mr. Gaines. What do you mean by that? I'm just as much boss here now as you are. I'm Joe Kinney's widow. I put in my claim for his share of the show. What are you talking about, Nellie? We were married five months ago. Why didn't you tell me about it? Why, you were with... Excuse, so clumsy. That's to slip with foot and then with tongue. I didn't tell you about our being married, Dan, because... Well, I knew you didn't like Joe Kenny, and I suppose he was keeping our marriage a secret because he was making a play for Marie Norman. That's not true. You're just saying that because you hate my sister. You keep out of this, Lou, and I can see through your game. Because Joe Kinney's dead, you're trying to put something over. But I know he never married you, or he'd have told me. Why should he? You were just another woman to him. And you thought you were so clever taking him away from me. Pardon the interruption, please. Uh, you have marriage certificate? No, don't ever let me have it. Uh, when was time of marriage? It was uh, May the 30th, Decoration Day. We were in El Paso, and the big top blew down, and we couldn't go on that night, so Joe and I went across the border but to you're... Juarez, and we were married. Now I know you're lying. I'm sorry, Miss Norman, but it's the truth. We found the marriage certificate. Then it's a fake. No, it isn't. Mr. Gaines verified the signature. But I know where Joe was that night. Marie, you haven't time now. There's your music. He wasn't in Mexico, and I can prove it. We'll get your story later, Miss Norman. Hurry. Get back to your work, folks. We've got a show on. Just a minute, please. Why didn't you tell us about this last night when your husband was killed? Joe and I hadn't been living together, so I thought I should see a lawyer and find out just where I stood. I'll take my marriage certificate. <laughs> One moment, please, sir. Certificate much safer in hands of law. Yeah, that's right. Well, you've got nothing to worry about. We'll take good care of it. Come on, Charlie. Marie! Norman! Get the clowns out here and keep things going. Right. Well, whatever she knew, 
Her mouth shut now. Silent witness sometimes speak loudest. She's still alive, but unconscious. We're taken to a dressing room. I don't see how it could have happened. That Regan is tested before every performance. Very strange. Accident most conveniently timed. I'll get the doctor's report. Suggest you place very close guard over Miss Norman. Might meet with another accident. You're right, Charlie. I'll see to it. Sir, bullet hole in canvas over trapeze. Very commendable research. Oh, uh, have discovered secret of perpetual agitation? I was only testing a machine, Pop. The magnifying female charms, very ancient optical illusion. <laughs> Look, Charlie. I found this gun under a wagon near the big tent. Now, here's the dope. Somebody was afraid Marie Norman would squawk about the night of May 30th and tried to finish her off. That's exactly what I thought. And it must have been the Farrell girl or maybe her brother. That doesn't make sense. This marriage certificate's on the up and up. <laughs> May I examine document, please? They're exactly alike. That proves it's Kinney's signature. Sure. Contradiction, please. Even if name signed one million times, no two signatures ever exactly alike. Then the Norman girl was right. It's a fake. Kinney's name was traced on there from the photo. Undoubtedly correct. It's a cinch. Look, Farrow had planned this phony marriage racket. He turned the ape loose to murder Kinney and planted the certificate in the safe. Then when the Norman girl threatened to spoil his game, he tried to knock her off. That's enough for me. <laughs> Not always wise to accept simplest solution. Mind, like parachute, only function when open. Ha! <laughs> if I can't make a case out of this, I'll pin my badge on the ape. Mr. Macy, I agree with you. <laughs> Thanks. Who was it? What? What happened? I'm so sorry. Uh, unloaded gun always caused most trouble. How'd that rifle get here? Was reposing against wall. Well, that's funny. Mr. Gaines never let it out of his stateroom. Please to return gun. Much safer in hands of owner. Gaines' rifle. That takes us right back to the guy we started with. But he's not going to talk his way out of it this time. We got enough on him now to make a pinch. No use to hurry unless sure of catching right train. Well, then what would you advise, Charlie? Wait for Miss Norman. She give clue when conscious. Is she badly hurt, Doctor? Well, there are two compound rib fractures and a possible spine injury. I sent for the fluoroscope before I risked moving her. When do you think she'll regain consciousness? Well, that's almost impossible to say. If something doesn't break when she comes to, I'm going to pinch the whole show. Excuse, please. You recall where sister was night of May 30th? No, I don't, Mr. Chad. I was... I wasn't with her. Perhaps you keep book of newspaper clippings. Why, well, yes. May I have permission to examine, please? Yes. 
It's in the top tray of her trunk. something, Pop? Telephone police headquarters. El Paso, Texas. Get all information concerning this shooting at Ace Casino. Also, description of Keeler. What's on your mind? Have idea for quick solution of mystery. Important you return with report soon as possible. You can count on me. Listen, operator, you gotta get me through. This is official business. Clear all wires. Yes, uh, police headquarters, El Paso, Texas. Make it snappy and reverse the charges. Mr. Macy, I can't stand it. Why don't they do something for my sister? Everything humanly possible is being done. Any change in condition? None. Perhaps we'd better take action. Each moment's delay increased danger. I'll make the necessary arrangements immediately. Lou, your sister's condition is quite serious. An emergency operation is necessary. We can't move it to a hospital. It will have to be done here without delay. <laughs> Lieutenant Macy, will you send into town for the equipment and assistance? Yes, sir. Don't worry, kid. I'll see that she gets the best of everything. Sergeant, drive to the hospital and see that the ambulance and equipment ordered by Dr. Mead gets here without delay. One moment, please. Must ask everyone's cooperation. Any noise or disturbance during operation may prove fatal. Please to remain away from tent and be quiet as possible. Get back to your quarters, folks. Farrell, you and Blake look after the animals. Yeah, that's right, Chief. The Ace Casino, night of May 30th. I want his description. Yeah, yeah, I get you. What? Repeat that, please. Yes, we got someone here who answers that exactly. Don't worry, Chief. This is Mr. Chan, Jr., and I'll get your man.
the one sun late. Tim, ah, oh, stop bothering me. Do you suppose they'll be much longer with the operation? I'm worried. Worry ain't gonna get you anywhere. Why don't you be calm like me? Ouch. See, you made me cut myself. I've got a funny feeling that something's going to happen. Ah, oh, stop acting like a kid. Why don't you grow up? Well, Charlie, your plan didn't work. Whoever it was got by the guard and released the ape. All right, boys. What's happened? What's the meaning of this? Necessary deception to protect life from Miss Norman. Sister safely taken to hospital much earlier. Rapid recovery assured. Suggest you both go there immediately. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chan. Hey, Pop! Pop! Pop, I got the information you wanted. The description of the killer at El Paso fits Holt. And I just caught him letting the ape out. I tried to stop him, but he slugged me. Holt, and he's our man. Cover all roads out of town. Send out a general broadcast. One moment, please. Unnecessary to search further. Here is Killer. Holt! Very clever scheme to establish perfect alibi. When committing murder, turn ape loose to give impression real ape guilty of crime. First, Suspected ape was man in disguise. From clue of hairs found on windowsill at scene of crime. Proved to be dead hairs, not from living ape. Second clue, marks outside window of business wagon. Real ape would never use barrel, would use feet to climb up to window. And now, report from El Paso complete link in chain. Mr. Kinney and Holt, old friends, meet at gambling casino on night of May 30th. This clipping show, they use crooked cards, were caught cheating, and in fight that follow, Holt killed Sheriff. Kinney protect him from police with the job in circus as snake charmer. Later, Men quarrel over money won at gambling. Kinney receives strange messages threatening life. Send for humble self to discuss matter. Holt, fearing Kinney would turn him over to police, resort to murder. Today, when Miss Norman revealed knowledge of night of May 30th, Holt, fearing statement would incriminate him as murderer, Attempt to remove her also. First attempt fail. Suspected he would strike again, so with aid of uh, Lieutenant Macy, laid trap. Death right finish to mystery. Yes, we cleared that up all right, Charlie. But it doesn't clear you two of forging that phony marriage certificate. Take him to headquarters. Charlie, you're a great guy. Put it there. I'll say you are. <laughs> thank you so much. Have a cigar, Mr. Chen? No, thank you. How about you, Mr. Macy? Oh, thanks. Well, Gaines, uh, 
I guess you can move the show out tonight, uh, unless Charlie here objects. Uh, no objections. But uh, Charlie Chan likes some time to see circus as simple spectator. I'll attend to that, Charlie. You'll have a lifetime pass to this show for yourself and family. Now, how many shall I make it out for? Fourteen or... Uh... I think fourteen quite sufficient. Maybe more later. <laughs> time. Time that stretch you've been wanting. And best of all, time to take your pick from that scrumptious array of tasty treats waiting for you at the snack bar, where the popcorn's popping, the cold drinks are sparkling, the hot dogs are playing, the coffee is steaming, and a luscious treasure of confectionery delights with ice cream and candy, and so much more to tempt any taste, is waiting for you now at the snack bar. You'll be notified in plenty of time when the next show is about to begin. Mr. Melton asked me to drop by for cocktails. Oh, yes, of course. Mr. Melton is still upstairs in his laboratory, but should be down soon. Uh, won't you join the other guests in the den? Thank you. Are any of those things dangerous, Mr. Melton? Those are all bomb models, except one. That one's loaded. It's more destructive than a blockbuster. If that were to drop, everything within a radius of 200 yards would be destroyed, blown to bits. That's better. See you later, boys. <laughs> now, wait. You fellows have followed me for two weeks. Won't you please take a rest? We're following that, sir, not you. Yes, I know, I know. But it's been safe here for two months. It'll be safe a few days more. We're here to watch this. This is Washington, D.C., not enemy territory, and I'm in my own home. I'm having guests for cocktails, and I'm not going to appear before them trailed by two Secret Service bodyguards. But, sir, we're all No. There. It's an insult to my friends for a host to appear with bodyguards, and I won't have it. You think I invite my country's enemies to cocktail? No, sir, but don't then you Then do say... your guarding from this room or from the street outside. Which one of those did he say was dangerous? Uh, that one right there, the one with the black cross painted on. Maybe we had better guard Mr. Melton from the outside. <laughs> This thing 
bodyguard to Melton sure bored me. Can't he get bored to get bored? Melton's an important man. That's why the president put us on this job. Yeah, I know that, but you'll have to admit it's a phony detail. Nothing ever happens. Hey, you, where are you going? Anywhere, mister, anywhere. I got an important date. I'll say you have right here. I don't belong here, mister. I'm just on the errand for Miss Winters. Ask her, she'll tell you. You stay here. He's dead and the plans are missing. Uh-oh. Did you say Mr. Melton was dead? Yes. This is hard. Anyone upstairs? No one. Everybody in the house is here. Take a look around. Everybody go in the living room, please. I said everybody, please. See here, by what authority do you come barging in here and... Plenty of authority. I carry a presidential warrant. Oh. Right away. Yes. Yes, I understand. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chan speaking. I'm expecting son and daughter. When they arrive, please send to office. Thank you. Guarding is dead. Melton, inventor? Yes. His newest invention, which the Navy believes would utterly destroy the U boat menace. Guard detail on duty, sir. House surrounded. No one let out except with proper credentials. Is that right? Exactly. Melton had the only copy of his torpedo plan on him just before he was found dead. Now it's missing. Very convenient that man should die merely to allow a plan to be missing. Almost too convenient. Suspect skillful hand of master spy Manlick, perhaps? Now it's up to you, Charlie, to find that plan immediately. You're in charge of the case. We'll do humble best. Secret service, huh? That pop needs my help if he wants to keep this job. Hello. Hi, Paul. Uh, please have cab waiting for Mr. Chan uh, immediately. Thank you. Goodbye. Hey, Paul. Pop, what about our sightseeing trip? Must be postponed for important business. Return to hotel. We'll see you soon. Maybe. I don't get it. Something's cooking. Pop's on a big case. We ought to be with him. Sure, but where did he go? You mean you don't know where Pop's gone? What a detective. Well, after all, he... I can find him. That's simple deduction. Okay, deduct and let's go.
evening, Mr. Chan. Why, Sergeant Billings, old friend from Hawaii and United States Marines. Nice to see you here, Sergeant. Uh, not so nice. All my old buddies in action everywhere, and I'm guarding dead men. May learn something of Germans and Japanese here. You know, all I want to know about them is what I can get looking over a rifle sight. Most excellent viewpoint. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Chan. Good evening, Doctor. Hey, you. Uh-oh. I just hear it. Hey, what? By the way out. Oh, my goodness, I was afraid of that. I've never seen a place like this, man. What do you Cause of death, please. A superficial examination reveals no cause, except perhaps a natural one. Please perform autopsy as soon as possible and send me a report. Yes, sir. I'll have the boys remove the body right away. Thank you. Glad to see you again, Jonesy. All right, Charlie. Everybody in house been searched? Yes, but we didn't find anything. I questioned them all. Here are their statements. Please, do not go upstairs. Very well. Who is she? The Duchess? Mrs. Hogg, the housekeeper. All the suspects are on this floor. Lewis and I have been searching down here for Melton's plan. He had it on him when he came downstairs and died. Have Lewis continue search. Am I glad you're on this case, Charlie? You know, we haven't worked together for ten years. By the way, how's the wife and seven children? Very fine. Only now have seven more. Seven more. You mean 14? Yeah. Everything grow rapidly in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> These two? Yes, Paul Arato and his sister. They're planning to leave for California tomorrow. No one leaves until case ended satisfactorily. It appears Mr. Melton came here to this spot, then died. Huh? We searched the closet, but found nothing. <laughs> the nervous nightmare is Mrs. Winters. She came for cocktails and got hysterics. Excuse me. That's Louis Vega, war refugee. Now traveling salesman for Herrick Brothers, exporters of Smyrna. Young lady is Miss Aranto? Yes. Oh, it's Mr. Melton's baseball team. That's him right there. There he is when he was with the college glee club. All this and an inventor, too. <laughs> Well, Mr. Chan, I found it. The plan? Melton's torpedo plan? Yes, sir. Where you find this? In the living room. Please show me exactly where you find this. Uh, right in here, Mr. Chan. Right over here, sir. I found it in this book. Well, I guess I'd better apologize to our suspects and let them go. No. Suspects are still suspects. Still deserve questions. No apologies. Why? Dead man's actions calling urgently for explanation. Dead man's actions? How can man walk around after he is dead? Hello. Hello. Say, aren't you Iris Chen, Charlie's number two daughter? Uh-huh. And you're Sergeant Billy. <laughs> That's right. Hey, last time I saw you, you were no bigger than that. Now, how do you remember me? A woman never forgets a good-looking man. <laughs> <laughs> Who 
Who's your boyfriend? He's no friend. He's my brother Tommy. No. Oh, looking for your father? He's inside. See, just plain deductions. Deductions? Are you kids working with Charlie like Jimmy used to? Well, Pop has to have us along to keep him out of trouble. <laughs> well, Charlie didn't see anything about letting you in. But couldn't we just look over the situation? Sure, sure. I'll pass the word around. You're okay. Yeah. On the outside. Thank you. You don't understand. It's not for myself. I don't have to go. It's my dog. My Pekingese. He has to be fed. But well, I'll attend to the dog, ma'am. Oh, do and hurry, Birmingham. Yes, ma'am. Uh-oh. Now, ain't that something they even got a walking ration around here? One moment, please. You are chauffeur for Mrs. Winters? Yes, sir. What you do here? Well, I come to bring something and I got stuck. I mean, I got detained. What you bring? A uh, statue of uh, a uh, Wait, I'll get it for you, sir. This is it, sir. Miss Liberty, very lovely lady. I think so. I made it myself as a present for Inez. For Miss Aranto? Oh, yes. Mm. It's a going away gift. I think it's beautiful. What it stands for is very beautiful also. And you are brother Paul Aranto? Brother, father, mother, guardian for many years. And you are Peter Laska? Uh, yes, he has been with me for four years. Oh, thank you. And uh, you, uh, Miss uh, Aranto? I will speak for Miss Aranto, Peter and myself. Excuse, please. Would much prefer that all present speak for themselves. You are David Blake, DPE. What does that stand for, please? Department of Political Economy. You read your newspapers, you know more about me. I uh, know what uh, columnists say about you in morning paper, quote, what David Blake does not know about political economy would fill many books. Unquote. Now, see here, I don't have Excuse, to stand... Excuse, please. Mrs. Hard, you were in pantry when body of Mr. Malcolm was found? Yes, sir. When I heard the scream, I ran into the hall and saw Miss Aranto kneeling beside Mr. Milton's body. She seemed to be searching his pocket. You saw no such thing. It's a lie. Don't you dare... Make her stop talking. Uh. You seem to have strange desire to silence tongues of all present. Uh, which one of you first discover body? I did. No, I was the... Actually, I discovered the body. Anyone else wish to nominate self as discoverer of body? Hmm. I better put this away before it hurts somebody else. Excuse me. Mm, I better scram out of here before I scram out of my skin. Your full name is, uh... Louis Philippe Vega. And I'm not interested in yours. Oh, you might be interested. This gentleman is Mr. Charlie Chan. You were where when Mr. Malcolm come downstairs? In the den. Nice alibi, huh? When alibi pushed at me, always suspect motive in woodpile. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Winters. When Miss Aranto screamed, you ran out into the hall? Oh, not at first. I couldn't move. I was simply putrefied. Excuse, please. I do not believe you mean putrefied. My dear man, I know what I mean. Well, I'll be a Popeye pollywog. So will I. Oh, my goodness, I'll be no such thing. Charlie, the picture in the hall. Um, curiosity now so small have but very few questions more to ask. Why ask any questions at all, then? Mr. Melton died a natural death. I heard one of your men say that whatever was missing from his pockets had been found. And you frightened my sister for nothing. Well, I'm not staying around just to satisfy your curiosity. Excuse. Detective without curiosity is like glass eye at keyhole. No good. We'll now show you where valuable missing document strangely reappear. Experiment will prove much. Mr. Lewis, please, will you take book from bookcase? 
Thank you. You may return same. Mr. Vega, you will assist the experiment? No. Uh, Mr. Aranto? What do you wish me to do? Merely take book from bookcase. Thank you. Mrs. Winters. I really don't see any sense at this game. Not when my Pekingese is... Merely, please, take book from bookcase. Oh, very well. Oh, hello, from under your bangies. Are you interested in that type of woman, Mr. Chan? Not at all. Valuable document placed in right side of bookcase. Mr. Lewis choose book from right side of bookcase. You also choose book from right side. But Mrs. Winters... Oh, well, but after all, I am left-handed. Exactly. So you choose book from left side of bookcase. One of it. Ninety-nine times out of hundred, right or left-handed person turn instinctively toward controlling side. George Melton was left-handed. Mr. Melton was left-handed. But how do you know? Same way Mr. Jones find out. There's a picture of a Yale baseball team in the hall. Mr. Melton's in it. The picture's inscribed with Mr. Melton's nickname, Portside. Even Chinese detectives know Portside ball player is left-handed. But what has this to do with the paper found in the book? Very strange. Mr. Melton placed valuable document in bookcase. Stranger still, left-handed George Melton placed document in right side of bookcase. And even stranger yet, that dead man lying in hall able to reach bookcase at all. Never knew dead man to carry things so far. Plan a very dangerous weapon. Follow directions here and dangerous weapon about as dangerous as unloaded toy pistol. Document is very poor forgery. Go on. What are you waiting for? But we're not supposed to. Pop's in there on a case. Are you a detective or a dud? Shh. Someone's in here. We better stay out. Oh, yeah? Iris, what you push me for? I'm surrounded. I got someone wearing a mask. Come on, give me a hand, Iris. Seems as though Chan family are about to have second reunion. Turn your move! You, you can't get away now. Turn your move! Ah! Good boy! Hey, hey, hey. What's I see double, perhaps. If that's me, I don't look so good. <laughs> I want you should remain upstairs. Yes, sir. That is order. Yes, sir. You can explain presence here. Well, tell the phone, little papa. I'm going to go to the club. 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 I'm going to go to Mr. Chen, what is they saying? All Chinese to me. Upstairs. Come on. Upstairs. Excuse, please, but sputtering, firecracker, and black sheep are noisiest members of Chang family. Excuse. Uh, you will go to hotel, please, and remain there. Just a minute, Mr. Chan. They could carry off the so-called important document, couldn't they? I don't get it. He's trying to pin something on us. And it's no bouquet. Excuse, please. Uh, Mr. Vega is quite right. You will go to pantry and remain there till called. And wash face. Children go through life with same tact as tornado. We can leave when you find whatever is missing? Just as soon as genuine Melton document is found. And his murderer. Murder? People in Washington don't go about murdering. Uh, evidently, few present who have forgotten rules. But surely you don't think any of us here are guilty. Difficulty now would be to find someone present who could not be guilty. 
Mr. Lewis, please. Have coroner send by special messenger. Yes, sir, as soon as possible. You return to headquarters. Give Mr. Slade full report of case up to now. Okay, Mr. Chen. Always someone about to stick fly in ointment. This time I am an unlucky man with three flies. If you stop, I'll help you out. You are like business end of water spout, always running off at mouth. Mm -hmm. Every time he looks at me, he makes me feel as futile as a traveling salesman with nothing but a car. But he's awful handy when there's a murder on the loose. M -m murder on the, the, the loose? Right in this very house. So let's investigate why Pop's upstairs. Blended instrument for plain and fancy cutting up? That's what I thought, so I took it when he wasn't looking. He? Peter. I don't trust anyone with a thing like that. And I don't trust the people he works for either. You do not trust Arantos? I won't say anything more. My gosh, Pop, detectives don't read while people sneak up behind him with a knife. In mirror, I see everything goes on behind back. You are a very smart boy. Trouble with modern children, they do not smart in right place. Did Confucius say that, Pop? No, I say that. Very strange woman, Mrs. Hogg. Yeah, Pop. She's strictly icky. Right off the cuff and way off the beam. Could possibly speak English? He means she's a slick chick gone to seed, Pop. She got bats in her head and bees in her bustle. Language sound very strange to elderly ears. Sure, Pop, but we're hip cats of the younger generation. You're Confucius, and I'm Confucius Jr. Confucius Jr. Please, go.
Going somewhere, pal? Just out for some fresh air. Try to get out of here and you're going to get some fresh air right through your stomach. No thanks. I don't care for that sort of air conditioning. Inside. You are not supposed to touch picture. We never touch it, Pop. Heck no. No, sir. No. When you search, Malcolm, you find any keys? No. Put picture back. I don't get it. Neither do I. I'm confused, too. Oh, Mr. Chan. Mr. Chan. The fellow tried to slip out of here a few minutes ago. Tall man or short man? He's good size. Well, it wasn't Peter or Blake. And a rat can't walk. It must have been Vega. I'll mix me up a little sudden death. Mm, some of this. Some of this. Some of this. I hope I don't see things after I get through drinking this concoction. Miss Jane, I, I, I just saw the murderer. Where? Right in there, right under my nose. I saw him when he poked his gun out through that curtain. No one there. Check the living room. You're told to remain in hall. We were upstairs looking for clues, Pop. Looking for clues upstairs while murderer downstairs shooting at honorable parent. Gosh, did they kill you, Pop? No, I mean, did they hurt you, Pop? You stay here, you might have seen murderer. But you also might get shot. Oh. Very glad you disobey orders and go upstairs. <laughs> yes. You're not scared, are you? Oh, good gracious. No. There's nothing to be afraid of. Of course not. I'm scared stiff. Same here. Come on. Well, what now? Can we hang around here a while, Pop? Yeah. Be very quiet, very quiet. They're all in there. No one saw anyone leave the living room. They don't know anything. Didn't even hear a shot. Never mind. Have problem now of ladies' linen. Oh, that's a real clue. You want me to get the women in so you can find out who owns it? Already know. Miss Aranto? Yeah. I'll get it. No, no. Miss Aranto does not smoke. Uh, does Mrs. Hogg or Mrs. Winters smoke? No, neither one of them can stand the smell of tobacco. Mm. Person who leave linen behind drape. Very heavy smoker. Well, there's Vega, Peter, Blake, several heavy smokers. Uh. You think if I'd ask your father to let me go home, he'd let me? What you want to go home for? I forgot something. What'd you forget? I forgot to stay there. Well, it was a good idea, huh? Good. Mr. Chan, 
Uh, oh, Mr. Chan, if I have to stay here all night with all those men, I really should have a nightgown. Good gracious, did I say that? I'm afraid so. <laughs> the things I do say. You will excuse, please. I'm very busy. Have murderer to catch. Mur oh, of course. You're a detective. <laughs> uh, hope so, yes. <laughs> like talk to typhoon. You remain here. Keep sharp eye on Paul Aranto. Come. Mrs. Hogg. Well? Household keys, please. Key here for everything? For every lock in the house. Thank you. Key turn in lock, but nothing happened. Put picture back. Time for a messenger from coroner to arrive. I'll check on that. You know, Mr. Chang, I would... No, no, you stay here. Oh, Pop, let him come. This joint is lonesome. Joint. Confucius Jr. Coming out? Why? Why, no. Hey, Pop, that Northern fellow sure knew his stuff, Pop. This is what made the Jap fleet not so fleet. I'm searching for evidence, not amusement. Okay, Pop. Unable to talk? Talk? Mr. Chain, I'm so scared I can hardly go. Perhaps should try same on Mrs. Winters. <sighs> Move now. Uh-oh, it's got me again. Electric cell behind eyes of head. When someone pass in front, make contact. Therefore, head moves. See? Uh, foxhole. That's just what I need.
Did not expect visitor to drop in here. Seems about time to drop conversation. shooting going on in here. Come, come, come. Any explained presence here? No gun on him, Pop. But where's the hat and coat? Someone tried to eliminate me in workshop, was you? Me? I heard shots and was headed this way when someone hit me. Hmm. Explanation too perfect to be true. Downstairs, please. He's murdering things going on here. Shots. Please, no talk now. Everyone in living room. Mr. Vega? Well, what is it? Really wish to assure myself you are among those present. All seem to be present except Mr. Aranto. Here I am, Mr. Chan. I was hungry and uh, left for a sandwich. When you go? Just now. Excuse, please. You carry a gun? I don't need one. If I don't like someone, I run over them. <laughs> Men who never leave wheelchair should never wear out shoe leather. I told you to watch Mr. Aranto. I thought I had him anchored to this. Mm -hmm. Some detective. Quiet, quiet. office. I think this is what you wanted. You miss all excitement. For a second time, I am target for tonight. Someone else took a shot at you? Do not like so much personal attention. Someone leave this room tonight to try to kill me a number three son. I'm guilty of a crime because I get a sandwich? If man places himself in way of finger of suspicion, must not be surprised if he receive poke in the eye. You suspect me? Suspicion like rain fall upon just and unjust. You protect yourself with umbrella of innocence. But at moment, I'm afraid your umbrella have big leak. Remain here. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chain, I'm sure is woozy. We'll require your assistance. Gladly, sir, if I can stay awake. You will wake up, perhaps quite suddenly. Here. Stand by closet door. You two remain by stairs, quickly. 
Everyone step into a hallway, please. Intend to show you how Mr. Melton was killed. This is murder trap. The closet and murder trap? Why, I've been cleaning that closet for years. If you're saying that I... One moment, please. Mr. Melton descends stairs this afternoon. He come to closet and open door. He stand with feet upon metal threshold and reach hand for electric chain. He pull same. And he is dead. Murdered. Murdered? But how? Electrocution. Oh, how shocking. Murder aware, many people who die by electricity leave no marks upon body to indicate cause of death. But if the coroner couldn't diagnose electrocution, how could you? Tax in heel of shoe, conduct electricity. Photograph, show tiny burns upon feet of murdered man. But you turned on the light. Nothing happened to you. One moment, please. Birmingham, will you please turn light off in closet? Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, Mr. Vega, will you kindly turn light on in closet? Please turn on light, Mr. Vega. But, uh, I... Conduct your own experiments. Remember, murderer wish to kill only one man, Mr. Melton. Excuse me. Now, Birmingham, you take rod. When I tell you to pull, pull. Yes. So murderer control deadly electricity from this switch in living room. Switch itself harmless. But panel of switch strangely loose at top. To crack in living room door. Murderer watch Mr. Melton descend stairs and open closet door. He then press loose panel. Pull. You are in need of refreshment, Mr. Aranto? Why, why yes, I... I could use a drink. This way, ladies and gentlemen. One moment, Mr. Vega, please. You are expecting to leave for California tomorrow with the Arantos? Why, I, uh, yes. So sorry. Must detain you. Birmingham, let go! Stop! You're all right. Am I? I thought that electricity done blow out all of my fuse. You carry a gun, Mr. Vega? No, of course not. Being a refugee from Europe, you know many people in Germany? No. You do not know someone named Manlich? Maybe your name's Manlich. I... I never heard the name before. Your last name is, uh, really Vega? Yes. Could not possibly be Von Wegen? No. Scientific who's who. Show your picture with name Philippe Von Wegen. You're no salesman. You are celebrated author and electrical engineer. Hunt for murderer nearly ended. Uh, for goodness sakes, who is it? Murderer now seated on divan. That's a lie! 
Oh. <laughs> I thought you meant me. You're accusing me of murder? You are an electrical engineer. Well, what about it? Murderer always choose weapon he know best. Pop, this guy's dead. But where's the gun? Gun? Yeah, you have to have a gun to make a hole like that. That's the second man who's been murdered. Mm -hmm. It just ain't no future for a man in this house. I've discovered killer of George Melton. Now question is, which one of you murder Louis Vega? I tell you, I don't know. I don't know any more about it than, than these people here. Strange facts of case. Most all concerned have been at one time in Smyrna. Mr. Aranto, you knew Louis Vega or Von Wegen in Smyrna? Yes. I've known him as Luis Vega for nearly a year. Miss Aranto? But I only knew him socially. I didn't know he was... You know him, Peter? Uh, Vega? He... No, uh, I have nothing to do with him. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mrs. Winters, you have been to Smyrna? Good heavens, no. But I've heard of the place. That's where all the figs come from. Mr. Blake, you knew Louis Vega in Smyrna. No. That is, well, yes. Yes, I, I, I knew him. I mean, whenever I'd call on Mr. Ranto, Vega was always around. And well, what I mean is, I didn't want to know him. This is hard. Maybe you've been in Smyrna, too. Spent two months there once. A very dull place where nothing ever happens excepting when it rains. And then what happened? It rains. Mr. Rado, will you come here, please? Time now to stop lying. What do you mean by that insult? You nearly rise from chair just then. I haven't walked in years. Well, you can tell the truth. No. Come on, speak up. <coughs> Come on, speak up. <coughs> Let her go. Oh, so you can walk. I must apologize for what I did. I must apologize also. It was my idea to prove you could walk. My masquerade as an invalid had nothing to do with any crime. I was in an accident some months ago. I recovered but kept in my wheelchair to find out what certain political enemies of mine would do if they believed I would not enter politics again. That is the truth, Mr. Chan. My correspondence will prove what I have said. If you believed I killed Vega, Mr. Chan, I present you with my wheelchair. You will need it before you find me guilty. We shall see. Draw curtain. I don't see how any of them killed Vega. None of them had a gun. They were all standing in front of him, and Vega was shot in the bag. Already know where a gun is. You do? Know who did it? Have strong suspicion. But until can prove how gun fired without hand to pull trigger, can accuse no one. What you want? Another key? Uh, one of yours? No. I found it on the piano. Know what lock this key fit? No. You're too far ahead of me, Charlie. What do we do next? Torpedo plan still missing. Have one more place to look. If plan not there, we'll expose murderer of Vega and have guilty person lead me directly to missing document. Gee, I'm sleepy. Me too. Then lie down somewhere. 
I'm with you when the next cop shows up. Next cop? But there's been two murders already. And they always happen in threes. <laughs> they sure do scare easy. Threes? Wow! Hey, Pop. Why, a detective at work. But, Pop, Pop, I, uh... Pop, Pop, you sound like outboard motor. <laughs> What happened? Third and final attempt upon life of humble self. Wall safe, also a murder trap. In ten minutes, we'll arrest murderer of Louis Vega. Pop, nobody standing in front of Van Vegan could shoot him in the back. Sit down, please. Murder gun staring at us like clock trying to hide face behind hands. Spring gun. Noiseless. In Alaska. Yes. Where were you when Melton come downstairs? Uh, I, well, right over there, next to the bar. From there, you have excellent view of entire room. Louis Vega killed Mr. Melton, then come down hall and into that door. Strange you do not see him. Oh, Mr. Vega? He... <laughs> I did not notice. I, I don't spy on people. Where is your gun? I... You have license to carry a gun in your room. Where is gun now? It's upstairs in, in my room. You did not leave same in pantry after it used on me in workshop? No, 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 Mr. Chen. I never use it. It is not in pantry. Four bullets fired from it quite recently. Where you find same? In pantry. Is same gun used on me in workshop? No, no, Mr. Chen, I never shot anyone. Mr. Van Wagen do shooting, but you leave it in pantry for him to use. No, Mr. Chen, I never... Always you are present when Van Wagen disappears. Always you are conveniently blind and do not see him go. That is not true. I know nothing about... And when about... Van Wagen is ready to confess, you kill him. I never killed anyone. You are wrong, Mr. Chen. Need Alaska... I arrest you for the murder of Louis Vega. No, no, you cannot arrest me when I do nothing. Mr. Aram, to protect me, these men are wrong. I, I'm innocent. I, I did nothing to anyone. I, I'm innocent. I hurt no one. I, I did not. I can't believe it. Peter, a murderer? It's so hard to keep servants these days. Great heavens. For two weeks, I've tried to bribe Peter to come to work for me. Well, Mr. Chan, but we were all right here in this room. I don't see how Peter could have killed Vega. I don't get it either. We'll show you. Gun used to kill Von Vega hanging on fireplace wall. Spring gun. Noiseless. Hanging on top. My gun now in its place. You mean it hung on the wall even when it killed Vega? Yeah. But how could Peter have fired it? All night long, wrestled with titles of Von Wagen's books. Finally, I find one I seek. Magnetic properties of electricity. You mean a magnet fired that gun? Exactly. When magnet turned on, gun pull against trigger and fire itself. I don't get it. 
But, Pop, where is the magnet? Directly in line with murder weapon. Come, i show you. This is electromagnet and murder weapon. Observe. But Peter wasn't near that table when Vega was killed. No one was near it. I don't see how Peter could possibly have done it. He stood right beside me at the piano. Exactly. All of you were near piano when Vega was killed. Therefore, piano is instrument which operates magnet. Everyone watching Von Wagen saw Peter Laska have plenty of opportunity to work mechanism. Switch which operates magnet is beneath here. Now, my gun is hanging on hook uh, in same place where murder gun hung. We'll try experiment. Please, all watch. <laughs> Who got it that time? That's an experiment. When did he get in here? And that is how Van Wegen was killed. Oh, good gracious. After tonight, all the excitement I want is trying to get into a new girdle, if I can get one. Oh, my pick Maybe go now, please, Mr. Chan. Everyone may go now. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh-oh. What's the meaning of this? Meaning we have finally caught real murderer of Van Wegen. You're insane. Permit me to prove my sanity. Only person seated at piano could have reached mechanism which operates murder gun. Peter Laska was standing. You were only one seated at piano. You were working with Van Wegen. Fearing he might confess, you killed him. Ridiculous. Excuse, please. You see? Uh-huh. Missing torpedo plan. Final proof of guilt. You are under arrest, Fraulein Manlich. Uh, I trust you will accept my humble apologies I'm so very sorry. Had to pick on you in order to catch real criminal. That is perfectly all right. Mr. Jones told me about it. I was very much scared at first, but most happy to help you, Mr. Chen. Thank you so much. You're welcome, sir. Also very grateful to everyone for their kind cooperation. <laughs> well, Mr. Chen, that Miss Winters, was she doing all the murders? Mm. Uh oh. You know, Pop, that Mrs. Winters wasn't so dumb at all. She was only putting on an act. I don't get it. Pop didn't get it. Didn't get it? Mrs. Winters didn't get it either. <laughs> Hello. Is this the manpower commissioner? Well, this is Birmingham Brown. And I'm wide open for a defense job. Because I got a what? Availability ticket. Where do I get that from? From my last employer. Are you kidding? It's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.